They say variety is the spice of life. Well, that's true. And I'm here today to talk to you about another aspect of that, which has to do with the idea that diversity in the food system and agriculture is the key to health and resist resilience for Temecula, for California, and for the nation, if not the world. Um, this is a picture of diversity, and I'm going to give you uh, hopefully many more through some stories I want to tell about how diversity plays a role in all of our lives in ways that we don't see. And California is the center of diversity in terms of the United States food system because we have two, uh, 400 crops that we grow here, uh, which is a really good start for where we need to go by the middle of this next century. The organization I work for, Roots of Change, is trying to create a sustainable food system in the state of California by the year 2030. And we're doing that because the system that we have isn't serving us at, in the way that it needs to for the 21st century. And we know this from many years now of reports. This is just one example. In 2006, the UN, uh, working with uh, 1,360 scientists for five years, four years, put out a report and this is just one of many reports, some having to do with nutrition some, nutrition, some having to do with the natural world, that show that the ecosystem is suffering and people's health is suffering because of the way that we produce uh, the, mo the, the, the vast majority of our food. And what are the big problems? Um, first of all, uh, we're producing food and packaging it, manufacturing and packaging it, in ways that aren't serving our biological health, our nutrition. Um, the second big thing is that we're concentrating animals and working with animal agriculture in a way that's, that's highly destructive. Um, we're dependent on machines in many ways, and we think that's efficient, and in some ways it is efficient, but there are many more efficiencies that we're missing because of this dependent on, dependence on machines. And obviously the whole system is based on oil, and we all know that, that oil is a finite resource, and therefore the system is unsustainable. But underneath the big problem as Nick Palumbo said earlier today, is in how we think. And the big problem is that we've taken an industrial mindset, which is very important when you're producing cars or computers, and we're trying to apply that to a biological system. And that is where the breakdown begins. Because biological systems, as we know from um, the great minds of science, um, depends on diversity. The engine of evolution is diversity. The engine of health and resilience in an ecosystem, in a society, is actually diversity. And in an assembly line, you have to eliminate diversity. You have to have uniformity to get to efficiency. And we've been thinking, and we have created factory farming systems based on that thinking. But nature, actually, is way more efficient than any factory you will ever see. It's incredible how efficient nature is. In fact, all the forests in the world only collect two-tenths of one percent of the sunlight that falls on the earth, but they produce 50 percent of all the oxygen we need every day. That's how efficient nature is. It produces the oxygen when less than two-tenths of one percent of the sunlight. Now, look at this picture. This shows you how efficient nature is. This is a um, spiral. You see them everywhere in nature. Why? Because that is the most efficient way to move nutrients and energy in a living thing. It's incredibly efficient. And the other great efficiency is plants and animals work together and feed each other. And that's how humans live, based on that symbiosis between all the species. And here's an interesting story. Buffalo, the Midwest, millions of years of coevolution with plants. Buffalo gained weight on everything. They gained weight and could survive on everything basically that was growing in the plains in the Midwest. Then, and then there were tribes, hundreds of thousands of Indian tribes, uh, of people that lived on these buffalo. When the Europeans came, what did they do? They wiped out the buffalo and they planted European grasses for European cattle and crops to feed themselves. And we unleashed the largest ecological disaster in American history, the Dust Bowl, right? And what happened? What was the core of that? We destroyed the diversity and interdependence of that diversity and that created the problem. Here in California, what is the problem for us? Well, there are several, but one of the big ones is we've, we've done monocropping, monocultures, right? Big, huge fields, and three things have to happen when we do that. We 
um, first of all, eliminate a lot of the plant species that are fixing nitrogen. And that takes nitrogen out of the soil. We have to cr create more nitrogen and use too much nitrogen, actually. We overuse nitrogen. You heard about that from Nick um, in our fertilizers. And that creates water pollution, right? The other thing that we do that creates water pollution and gets nitrogen in places where it shouldn't be is we eliminate the corridors of plant life between rivers and the fields. And that allows leakage into the watersheds. And now in California, what we have are big pools of nitrogen polluted water underneath the Great Central Valley and the, uh, in Monterey, the um, Pajaro Valley, two of the most fertile, important agricultural places. And UC scientists determined this year that if we stop the pollution today, it would take 30 to 50 years to clean up. That's a serious problem. But there's lots of hope. That's the bad news. There's lots of great stuff happening. This is a picture taken in 1915. On the left, Thomas Edison. On the right, um, uh, uh, Henry Ford, the assembly line. Who's in the middle? Anybody know? Luther Burbank. Luther Burbank was the greatest plant breeder in American history. 800 varieties of plants and, and, and food that you eat today, you will know. Um, Bur Burbank potato, uh, the Santa Rosa plum, Shasta daisies. These, those came from, from that man. And the two um, titans of industry came to see him. Why? Because he was seen as a wizard, a magician, because he understood the power of diversity in plants. And the great news is we, he was here in California, and we have that in our DNA here in California. It is a meme. And what is happening here? You have farmers reintroducing diversity along the rivers and the, and the, and the water systems to keep the pollutants from the roads and from fields from getting into the water. Here you have diversity being used as a hedgerow, where you have different types of um, trees and plants and being used to bring good insects in. And you have, you can see the stubble underneath the new plants. And that's because there was a cover crop that was used to fix nitrogen. So that farmer needs to put way less nitrogen on his field. But the other exciting thing, and Nick talked a little bit about this today, the idea that farmers are getting real-time data out of their fields. There is a, a plethora of sensors being developed, which are going to allow farmers to be closer to the actual biological action in a field at any moment. So they only need to do things in that field that are required by the plants or, or animals that are in that field. They won't have to be putting too much of anything on. This is really important. Here's another example. This is, what that is is a little uh, red thing that has pheromone in it that attracts the bad insect. The bad insect goes in there and gets caught. That's a huge breakthrough. They don't have to use pesticides, right? So poisons, there's a lot less poison. Very important breakthrough. And they're creating now new biological pesticides, which are actually based on nature. They're not industrial scale types of broad spectrum killers. They're very precise. They target one insect, one place, at a certain point in that insect's life. That's where we're headed, precision agriculture. And this is very important, because what it means is we're understanding what's going on deeply in the biology. We're understanding the nature of complexity and the nature of, of, of uh, diversity in the field. And water. You saw water on that plant. Water is the big thing here in California. And in the past, what we did is in an industrial approach, we created huge dams. Those huge dams had implications for fisheries, for fishermen, for other species. We're moving to a different approach. What we're doing now is creating more places for water to be captured on farms in smaller ways, even down to creating little contour trenches that capture the water when it rains and lets it sink in deeper. And it gets into the roots of the plants and holds moisture, so you need to water less. The other thing that's happening in the rice growers in California, an incredible example. What they've done in the 80s, they began this. They stopped burning because the environmentalists were mad at them. And they stopped using pollutant or, or really broad spectrum killer pesticides and um, biocides in their fields. And what's happened? California now has one of the hugest flyways of birds in the world. And the farmers are actually making more money because they're selling the rights to hunt and pho photograph photographers to take pictures. So they've diversified their revenue stream by bringing diversity to their fields. This is the future. Now that is the diversity that many of us see today. And that is a dangerous diversity because there's actually only three or four crops behind all the food right there. It's soy, corn, uh, wheat, and other 
uh, and, and a, a plethora of meats that are raised on those three crops. And that is creating health problems, particularly for low-income populations in the state of California and for people of color. And that is an injustice. And the last and most important part of diversity is that we have to think about all the people in the state of California. And the great thing is we're doing it. You heard from Gigi about what's going on in the school districts with the school food transformation that's underway. But it's also happening in low-income communities where farmers markets now are making available to people on food stamps fruits and vegetables. And when they come in with $10 or $20, they get matched if they buy more fruits and vegetables. Those are incentive programs we're we'll putting in place. Doctors are now writing prescriptions for vegetables for families that need it because they have diabetes. That's a wonderful thing. And who's behind it? The healthcare industry. Why? It will save them money. It will save us all money if people eat more healthfully. So it's really important that this diversity be turned around and changed. And it will be. If we demand more fruits and vegetables and diverse foods to eat, it will change the landscape. It will make uh, opportunities for farmers. If we ask them to do certain things, they will do it because they want markets. And they will create beauty because the incredible thing about diversity in the food system is it's way more beautiful than doing it the other way. It's way more beautiful than an industrial food system. And these are examples of many crops being interplanted together with hedgerows. And this is a really healthy environment because of it. But it's happening in the cities too. This is Oakland, West Oakland, one of the toughest parts of the city. What do you see? On the walls, memes, you see symbols of diversity being captured and enjoyed and celebrated by the folks that live there who are planting gardens. And one of the great things about this is that soon after this garden was planted, the, the person who runs People's Grocery, where this building is, called me and said, you wouldn't believe what happened today. I walked outside and a police car pulled up. I thought there was trouble. Then more police cars, more police cars. What happened was the first policeman had seen it, called his buddies that came. And what they wanted to say to People's Grocery is, thank you for planting this garden. Because where there are gardens, there's less violence. That is important. So this is what I'm here to say today. California is the place, and it's happening. There's an emerging new mainstream in food and farming, and it's built on diversity. And that diversity has to do with what goes on on the farms. We have, need more diversity on every farm. We need more diverse businesses of every scale that feed us, get food to us. And we need more diversity in the way that we eat. And all that diversity has to be shared with all Californians. Thank you very much.